I mean, to be honest, it was the luxury property manager for really high end properties in New York and in Los Angeles. And then I was all of a sudden just doing single family home, maybe not in the best area, not luxury. It doesn't matter about your age. Like people who are older seem to have a false sense of authority because of maybe their experience. But you have to, again, just be able to check your ego and say, I don't care. Like, so what? She's 20 years younger than me. She's still my, she's still my supervisor. I report to her. This is what, this is where I'm at right now. And so I call back the next week and the next week and the next week. And I would just keep doing this over and over, which you have to, especially if you're, you're in sales. This is something that you have to really get used to and know that it's all part of making the deal. Rejection. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Global Achievers. In today's episode, we have Rain Phillips joining us from Los Angeles. She's actually one of the only leasing agents in Los Angeles who solely focus on rentals. So today, we're going to be talking about the business of leasing, how leasing agents make money, and how they can be successful at this very competitive game. So stick around. We'll be right back. And good morning to Rain, who's joining us from Los Angeles. Rain, good morning. How are you today? Good morning. I am well. I am hot. We're in a heat wave here, so I'm good, though. And I want to just open up by thanking you for allowing me to be a guest on The S Factor. Okay, excellent. Thank you. We are. It's a pleasure for us to have you here. Um, I'm very excited about our conversation today. So uh, let's get started. How was your experience initially? Uh, being in that uh, New York market? Well, I passed the exam um, mm-hmm. the first time out, which was amazing because the first time I tried, it dropped out. So I passed the exam mm-hmm. the first time I was elated because now you can start doing business. And when I initially started at Manhattan Apartments, um, the structure there was in teams. So you would join a team and you would try and make money from somebody giving you let's say the head of the team would give you a list and you would take your client out and you would go to like 10 or 12 apartment homes and you would just try to get them to apply to something. Well, everybody else in the city still has the keys to the same apartment home. So you're all showing one property, hoping that you're going to get one person to like it, qualify for it, sign it so you can get paid. So it was, um, it was really competitive. It was super, super competitive. And um, I didn't like it. And matter of fact, I didn't do very good at it. I made a few deals and then I got really lucky. And I had a friend from Chicago who introduced me to somebody who knew somebody, one of those stories, kind of a long shot, who got me into the related companies. And I started there as a luxury property manager. So I was still in real estate, but no longer on commission. I was making a salary. I had an office. I had health insurance. And I really thought, okay, finally, we're someplace. Like, I'm on the map. I really felt like this was this is my thing. Like, I was going to keep up with it. All right. Got it. And once you moved to LA, how did you find the real estate environment? I immediately felt regret. I was just like, turn back time. I was like, I did not like LA. I just, I just didn't understand the city. I just felt like it was so massive. Everything to me looked the same in terms of palm trees and strip malls and 7-Elevens. It just all looked like exactly the same. Like I could, like I couldn't really visually, there was no change for me where in New York, I was very used to walking through the neighborhoods and knowing I was transitioning from like the east side to the west side or downtown to uptown. Here it was just like mass like highways and I hadn't driven in a really long time. 
And so I was scared to go on the highways. I didn't want to go on the 405, which is like a mandatory (laughs) highway if you want to go anywhere. So I was really, really just upset with myself for making that decision. And I wound up getting hired downtown LA for condo management, which is something I'd never done. And downtown LA looks a lot like downtown New York City. (laughs) So all my friends were like, hey, what's it like? Palm trees and pools at work. And I was like, no, I'm actually in a really urban (laughs) environment downtown LA. And they were like, what did you do? And I was like, I don't know. (laughs) And then the crash happened. And when the crash happened, that completely that really decimated my world because I didn't have my eight years of real estate network, my LinkedIn, my friends, my professional colleagues. I didn't have any of that to lean on. I had about five months of LA real estate experience. So it was pretty scary. Mm. So that was a really challenging time for yourself. And, um, How did you overcome those things? Well, um, it wasn't overnight at all. Matter of fact, Mm -hmm. it took me about five years to restabilize. It really, I mean, there were no jobs. And that's something that people have to understand is that there was nothing. I mean, all the, the markets crashed. It was America's largest depression, recession since the 1920s. And so either you still kept your job and still kept your status quo, or all of a sudden you were just out there struggling. And so for me, since I couldn't find anything in property management, I just leaned into the things that I really wanted to do um, as hobbies. And so I was a cheesemonger at the Beverly Hills um, cheese store for like during the holiday season. So I did their gift wrapping and a little bit of cheese work. And I worked at another little specialty shop. Um, On the weekends, I sold um, gourmet truffle salt at the Malibu farmer's market. I just, it was all hustle, but no heart. It was just all fear. Instead of the hustle and heart, mine was just hustle and fear of like, where am I going to make money next? Where am I going to live next? what's going on next. It was just more about, it was a very day-to-day survival mentality, which I didn't like. It was very scary for me. Okay. So a lot of hustle during those times, obviously. And um, which year would you say that you sort of got back into real estate and you saw things turning around? So I noticed the market was changing, the economy was getting back, and I had applied for a part-time job on Craigslist to just house manage a few simple properties in the LA area. And I met the guy at like a Starbucks. He was super cool. And he said, you know, I've interviewed like 15 people for this. And I was just like, okay. I mean, for me, it was a little bit like, I'm a real estate agent in California now. I come from, I have kind of a pedigreed background of real estate. And this is like dual single house management. So I definitely felt like, wow, it's still very competitive out there. And I just have to be humble and say, well, I'm going to use my experience to do the best that I can for you. And that was the turnaround for me. He gave me the job. So I started putting together more small real estate jobs instead of looking for what I used to have, which was, you know, these, I mean, to be honest, it was a luxury property manager for really high end properties in New York and in Los Angeles. And then I was all of a sudden just doing single family home, maybe not in the best area, not luxury. (laughs) And so it was really, it was just, it was a real, like, you're going back to basics. And that's something that I was fine with. I was like, everybody's got to restart. I felt like the game Monopoly, I was going right back to go. And I just took where I was at. And I was like, I know I can skip ahead at some point. Like I have enough experience where I'm going to be able to move ahead quicker. I'm not starting from scratch. I'm just restarting. 
So it was definitely some inner pep pep talk, (laughs) some inner work happening there. Okay. Okay. So basically it's about taking one step back to go two steps forward, right? At that point. Yes. In that economy, it was definitely doing that. And then I got some lucky breaks where I did some on-site management work. I was able to um, move into, and this is where I get my big break. I was, um, I was able to move into a luxury lease up um, for a new building in Westwood. Okay. And uh, which year was that? Wow. So this was, okay. So it's 2022. This was probably 2017 going into that summer or the summer of 2018. So for me, I feel like all my success has just really been more recent because I had come back from like a vacation and it was a Friday and I was on Craigslist and it was for a luxury lease up position. And I just submitted my resume and I was walking out the door to go meet my friend and they called me and they said, would you come in today to interview? It was like three o'clock on a Friday afternoon out in the Valley. And I was like, can it wait till Monday? <laughs> like, I really didn't want to go. They're like, no, you have to come in today. And I was like, all right, I'm coming in. Give me the address. I will see you when I can get there as soon as possible. So I got there and it was for a company and they hired me that day for this luxury lease up, which wound up being just saying yes, which has been like a major factor in my life, just being open to having the next door open for you. Um, I went into the office they hired me on the spot. I started on Monday. So that was a real pivotal turn in my career because this building in Westwood, there hadn't been anything coming up in Westwood. There hadn't really been a lot of new construction that had been completed because everything had kind of been paused in the pandemic. So now things were coming back online again. And this was one of the first buildings to be completed. So a lot of developers that were still in their projects, they were coming to what they call in the business shop, me and the building, which means they were taking a tour, not saying who they were, just saying like, oh yeah, I'm looking to move. Because if not, maybe people wouldn't want to waste their time on giving them a tour. But um, yeah, I met the person who would become pivotal for my next step in my career while giving him a tour. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, that, yeah, that's great to hear. I mean, uh, the opportunity was there. Um, even though, as you said, it was Friday, you didn't want to go in, but you did. And that uh, ended up being something very positive for yourself. <laughs> yes, I did not want to go. And I remember vividly thinking like, I can't believe these people won't wait till Monday. Like, what's the big deal? But I'm really happy I did that. And then they placed me at the building. The building was gorgeous. Um, I felt very blessed to be there in the sense that I was in a new development. I loved um, my manager that I worked with, who, by the way, is significantly younger than me. Like, <laughs> And I was her assistant. And people would come and I'd be like, well, here's my supervisor. And I would point to who we like became really good friends and still are. She, she calls me her work wife. Um, she... she um, They'd be like, she's your manager. And that was another great lesson for me to like learn. Like, it doesn't matter about your age. Like people who are older seem to have a false sense of authority because of maybe their experience. But you have to, again, just be able to check your ego and say, I don't care. Like, so what? She's 20 years younger than me. She's still my, she's still my supervisor. I report to her. This is, what, this is where I'm at right now. And do the best that I can, even though I've been in her position before. And just put your head down and just go for it. This was also something where the beauty of a lease up is when you do a successful job, it's done. It's leased up. So I knew that I was only going to be there maybe for six months. And so in the back of my head, I was like, what am I going to do next? 
And how am I going to make a career out of this? Because I was really doing well and enjoying myself renting properties, which was not the experience that I had in New York City. Okay. I knew Excellent. this was going to be my career. All right. Perfect. So that's something very important you said that, you know, sometimes you got to check your ego. Well, not sometimes, I guess, majority of the time. If you really want to succeed, you really got to check your ego at the door and just go on about your work because ultimately that's what's going to move you ahead, right? So uh, speaking of moving ahead, um, tell us or share with us, you know, what happened next. Well, um, a, a gentleman came in and he filled out the guest card. We went through all the steps that you would for a regular tour, which is piece of ID, filling out the guest card. And I took him to the first model apartment. And as I was showing him the apartment home, he said, just stop, just stop. He's like, I'm actually a developer. I think you're amazing. This is the best tour I've ever gotten. You're obviously a professional. You're on your A game. I really want to mentor you and introduce you to some property owners in Los Angeles that I think you could work with, that I think you could have a successful relationship with. And I was, I was really blown away. I was was really surprised he said that to me. I was like, thank you for the compliment. I would like to meet with you. And so we started a relationship where he did mentor me for a few months and we kept up. And then he introduced me to somebody kind of, I think he talked to me about this person and he gave me their information and I was trying to reach them. <laughs> this is kind of funny, but they would never call me back or I would call the office. They'd keep me on hold for about 15 minutes and come back to me and say, not available. Can't talk today. I was like, all right. And so I'd call back the next week and the next week and the next week. And I would just keep doing this over and over, which you have to, especially if you're, you're in sales. This is something that you have to really get used to and know that it's all part of making the deal. Rejection. You're not gonna, you're not gonna get a yes the first time. Maybe you will once in a while, but overall, you gotta stay in there. You really have to be committed to what you're going to do and realize don't take anything personally. Just don't take it personally. It's not you. It's a life decision for somebody to move into an apartment home. So finally, I get the call from the office and they say, can you come in this day and time? So yes. So I went in and I met the owner of one of the, he has a major portfolio in Los Angeles. I met him. And pretty tough man. <laughs> we tried to I tried to negotiate of my salary, my commission, ask a few questions here and there, and it was just hard no to everything. No, no, no. I was like, I can work with that. <laughs> I can work with those no's. I was just get my foot through the door, prove who I am, and show them what I've got. So at the time, his structure was there were two other agents and then he was bringing me on and we were all competing for the same properties, showing them and submitting our application to the office for review. So it was tough. I was coming in second. I was coming in second. I was making money, but it was nowhere where I wanted to be. And I was actually thinking about, now this is probably in 2019 or yeah, maybe 2018. I was thinking about possibly relocating back to New York City. And I had told the office I was going back to New York City for vacation and I'd be back on Thursday. So I left for New York the Thursday before and I had some interviews lined up. 
And I met with a few people in New York and they offered me the job, like start the interview process. And the salary was exactly the same as when I left New York, which was kind of like mid entry level salary, like right about there, like a three year experience. But by now I had had so much more experience. I had bi coastal experience. I was like, I can't go back to New York. Like I can't make this amount of money. I mean, this is one of the reasons why I left. So I came back to LA on Wednesday and I was set to go back to the office on Thursday. And they called me on Wednesday, the manager called me and I'll never forget it. He said, are you back in town? And I said, yes, I am. He said, well, I know you're supposed to start tomorrow again. And I said, yep. And he said, um, well, you're, well, you were away. One of the agents got really sick and was hospitalized. And the other agent resigned. And they said, it's all you. You've got the keys to the portfolio. Make it work. And from then on, when I say it was like the clouds parting, the sprays of sun shining in, it felt like that. Like I knew I had the opportunity to make this happen and to change my life. And I took that opportunity and I immediately did what I could do, which was like by hiring my friends <laughs> because I needed somebody to like be a team right away. And so two of my friends started working with me until we could just kind of shave off like all the old inventory that had been sitting there because I had been gone for a week. And I guess the other person had been planning on resigning and he was kind of slacking off. So we had a bunch of old inventory and we just started working it, working it, working it. And another thing that I did that was super beneficial for the company was that I offered a great customer service. And so their reviews on Yelp were very negative in terms of customer service. And they had name checked the agents that were giving them the, the bad customer service. And so I saw that and I was like, give me a good review. Please give me a good review and mention my name. And as that started happening, and the customer service level was improving, the office started noticing and they started noticing what I was doing for them. And that made me more valuable. And so it was really, it was just, I mean, honestly, it really was a combination of right place, right time, hard work, great customer service and staying in the game. Awesome. Yes. Um, I think there were a lot of things which you said are of real value. For example, persistence. Uh, you know, you kept at it. And the other thing is that a lucky break came your way. Yeah. I mean, if you didn't stay around, say, for example, if you wanted to move back to New York or whatever, or get out of the company, you wouldn't be around for that opportunity because it would fall on someone else perhaps, or they would hire someone new, but it came your way and you made full usage of it. So um, uh, there are a lot of uh, good things you said there. Awesome. So Rain, uh, that's, um, uh, that's excellent. And um, you started doing really well. And um, speaking of success, how many deals would you say you have done throughout your career? Thousands. <laughs> I usually it's hard for me to actually count. Um, mm -hmm. But during summer, I usually do about four to five transactions a week. That means I sign a lease and move somebody into an apartment home, which it's a lot of work. Um, but yeah, so I'm in the thousands. I've helped many Angelinos and a few New Yorkers <laughs> find um, find their happy home. Yeah, it's a good feeling. Okay, excellent. And um, speaking of uh, numbers, um, are there any revenue, revenue numbers that you would be comfortable sharing with us? Well, my business um, during Corona, um, during the pandemic, like the heart of it, when it first happened, there was a mass exit out of Los Angeles. 
So we had a lot of surprise vacancies, especially because this portfolio um, has a lot of two bedrooms and we had roommates that no longer wanted to be living with a roommate. So I, my company grossed, I believe just over 200 K that year. Um, so that's not what I netted. It sounds really great. And it was really great. I was really, and I am proud of all the work that we did as a company to make this happen. So I am set up as the leasing department, which means that I rely on a team to help me show a team. I have a professional photographer and someone who's helping me um, program these intercoms because I'm technically challenged. I can't seem to program an intercom. Um, so I have people that I work with, um, of course, um, advertising. I mean, I do have business expenses, but yes, I'm happy to say that year we grossed over 200. So it's been good. It's been Excellent. Really good. Excellent. That's really good to hear. So I think one of the things a lot of people are interested to learn and that and I'm confused as well, is how does a leasing agent actually make money? All right. Well, there's a few ways. Um, I'm a residential leasing agent. So you can either work for a large portfolio, one of the larger um, communities. There's Graystar. Um, I'm trying to think. Um, there's Moss and Company. So you have all these companies that you can work for, and you can find the jobs under leasing agent or property management. And most of the time, um, they'll just put you on site, and you'll just you'll gain experience that way by touring the building, the amenities, parking, um, just going over what utilities are paid for, and then going through the application process all the way up to lease signing. So that's how most people traditionally start is just by working in property management, which I recommend because you get, you get the full spectrum of experience. I'm an independent leasing agent. So I make commission because I work for, I work on a 1099 basis. When you go to do this job, like on site for a company, it doesn't pay much. <laughs> have to be honest. You really have to strike out on your own by either being a real estate salesperson and doing a mix of multifamily home sales or single family home sales and doing leasing on the side. That's what most people traditionally do to earn a higher paycheck. If you do straight leasing for a company, I would say the professional value that you would find on Indeed unless you have the experience to be a leasing manager and leasing, it's a little bit more difficult to break the six figure sum. So I'm really lucky because I'm in a niche market that mm -hmm. I created for myself. And mm -hmm. I think that anybody who wants to stay in real estate sales, they have to really think outside the lines because if not, you can get really into a lane, especially in corporate. Mm -hmm where you may, it may not be as lucrative as you want it to be because you have a lot of shows like Selling Sunset, all these like reality shows that are showing like a lot of money being made from real estate agents, but that's very rare. That's a very competitive world and the Los Angeles real estate market is flooded with agents and a lot of them just don't survive or they'll do like maybe one or two deals a year and that's it. And then They'll bartend at night. I've met a lot of people who act, they bartend. It's just part of some of the income that they make. It's a blended income where, you know, they're in a gig economy and that's one of the things that they rely on. It's, it's a difficult career because you are, I mean, I've been working all commission now for five years. And I've definitely had like sink or swim moments where I've been like, it's looking lean. <laughs> we got to, we got to dial things back here this month. So, cause you can see what's going on by your pipeline, like what deals you've made, what deals are coming through. And you base that on how much inventory you have. If you don't have a lot of inventory, you're not going to have a lot of sales. So you have to look at the whole picture. Okay. So a lot of in, important information right there. 
And I want to break it down a little more if I can and just simplify it. So basically, leasing agent makes a commission from the unit which has been rented, correct? Yes. In professional, I mean, I'm professional, but I work for myself. So I work on a set commission. Mm -hmm. But somebody who were to work for a company, they would get the benefits, everything. So my understanding from when I was in that position at the lease up, I had an hourly um, wage. And then I received, um, I think it was two fifty dollars for every unit I closed. So I got paid hourly and then two fifty dollars on it. It's okay. Okay. All right. Yeah, Perfect. Uh, here. <laughs> so at the time it's done, you're like, okay. <laughs> all right. Uh, thanks for that information. That's very valuable. Um, one of the other things you mentioned is about you know, career prospects in this field, right? So you've been in this field for a very long time. Who would you recommend uh, this particular career stream for? I'd recommend it for somebody who is a self-motivator, who can be able to take initiative, who's ambitious, who doesn't want a nine to five. When you're working in a corporate as a leasing agent, I felt like I was in a fishbowl. It was just take the elevator up, tour the model apartment home, go to the roof, check out the view. I mean, you kind of go a little bit on autopilot because you do it so much. It's just, you have a, a script and a tour path. So if that, if, if you want to kind of play it a little bit more safe and get experience, then that's a great way to start. But I think after a few years, if you're really motivated and really like what you're doing, because I I really like what I'm doing, but I just couldn't do it in that kind of environment anymore. It was just getting a little bit too boring for me in that sense where I wanted to mix it up. I'd love to go back to it at some point. But right now for me, I I find you really have to be self-motivated. And again, don't take rejection personally. This is, this is business. And that's something that took me a while to kind of brush off and not let it affect me. I'd be like, okay. Like just the other day, I was going into a lease signing. It's an apartment home that I really wanted to rent. They had the lease. They weren't signing it. That was a strong signal that they weren't going to sign it. And I could feel it. And um, yeah, they just wound up texting me. They were like, hey, we're not going to move forward with it. It's like, <laughs> next. <laughs> like, I got to keep it moving. I got to go out there and keep it moving. You know, you have that moment of like, uh, and then you're like, okay, well, bounce back and bounce back quicker. You know, what is that expression where they say, I think you were the one we were talking about it off camera, the harder you fall the quicker you have to bounce back. It's just perseverance. Get back up. It's sales. Yes, exactly. And I think it's about persistence as well. And as you rightfully said, a self-motivator, someone who can actually get out there, take rejection, go to the next one, close the next one, maybe get rejected a few more times and close the next one. So, um, I think that's um, that's the way it needs to be if anyone wants to come into this uh, particular line of work. So, Rain, if people wanted to find you, where would they look? Oh, the best place to go is my website, which is theleasingdepartment.com. Um, I have all my contact information there with my Yelp reviews, um, exactly what I do with my company and how I can provide a service to a owner or to a renter. And that's something that I would love to help you with. Okay, excellent. And uh, I will link those things in the description below. So if anyone wants to check out Rain's website, uh, feel free to do so. Rain, thank you so much uh, for your time today. You have added so much value for our audience. And um, I wish you all the best uh, for your future ventures. Thank you. And as they say, happy hunting. (laughs) Good luck. (laughs) Awesome. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye. Bye.